So、uh, today we are going to talk about the open source compliance challenges in our semiconductor company and how we overcome those difficulties. So we hope you will gain some ideas for, for complying with the open source license of your products. So let's get started. So Here is the rundown for today's dis discussion. So, we have mainly four parts. First,、uh, we will discuss common issues in the license clearance workflow. And in the next two parts,、uh, we will ex explore the challenges and implemented solutions in our semiconductor company. So, lastly,、uh, we will showcase our contribution activities. Okay. So, before moving further,、uh, let me introduce ourselves quickly. So, I'm Shimomura. So, I've been an embedded engineer for an、uh, extensive period, contributing to the development of various products such as camera, TVs, and、uh, video devices. So, and、uh, over the years, I have also been actively involved. Uh, in development using open source, and now I have in initiated and managed the company's OSPO. So then. Okay, hello.、Uh, my name is Yuji Handa.、Uh, I work for Sony,、uh, uh, Sony Semiconductor Solutions, and I have a various、uh, software engineering experience, like、uh, software embedded in. Into TV or camera or some kind of firmware or SDK, UI, UX, machine learning, and so on. And last year I、uh, created an OSPO in、uh, SSS. So、uh, today I will、uh, talk about that experience. Thank you. Okay. So, next, so let me talk to you about our company. Uh, the Sony Group consists of several、uh, segments, so including、uh, game, music, picture, and、uh, entertainment technology and services, and、uh, imaging and solutions, and financial, financial services. So we are Sony Semiconductor Solutions Corporation. So it's wholly owned、uh, subsidiary of Sony Group Corporation, and that's、uh, where we come in.、Okay. Then, and Sony Semiconductor Solution has many subsidiaries, as shown in this slide. Our primary focus is on image sensor, image sensor development, but we also have a lot of software development. Naturally,、uh, we frequently utilize and contribute to a, a diverse range of open source software,、uh, sometimes managing and figure out all. OSS activities in our company can be challenging. So now we move on to the license clearance issue.、Uh, as you are aware, achieving open source license compliance can be challenging. In addressing those challenges, we have established an internal open source compliance management process, and we are proud to be open chain certified. So,、uh, oh, sorry. Oh. Ah, sorry.、Um, I'm essentially grateful to the open source chain community for gu guiding us in improving our processes. So, however, it's important to note that our compliance process is st 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 stringent, detailed. Time consuming and not always easy to grasp. grasp.、Okay. Then, okay. And also, it's difficult, difficult to execute because it requires software engineering expertise. So, this slide shows. That dependency analysis, analysis is difficult.、Uh, we need to know all the dependencies, not only direct dependencies, but also indirect dependencies. Then, sorry. 
Uh, to investigate all dependencies, we should check like package metadata, but metadata may sometimes may be wrong. To solve this issue, uh, we need we need detailed knowledge of build build system building system and build configuration for each product. Sorry. So we have also another diffic difficulty. So another difficulty is license investigation. After we identify software com components, we investigate license of each component. There are a great scanning tool like Hosology, uh, Hosology, and so on. In fact, we use both of them. But uh, to identify a appropriate license, licenses, we need to be familiar with those tools. Scanned, uh, scanned result contain may false detections. We need some know-how to deal with them effectively. Okay. And of course, open source license knowledge is needed. So, okay, so I'll pass to Sam. Okay, and uh, previous slides show that common issues in open source license compliance. And next, I'll show you uh, unique challenges for us. Okay, this slide uh, roughly describes the uh, product domain of our business uh, in SSS. And as you can see, it's very wide. And we have great sensor devices, of course, and we want to make the world better by great solutions utilizing our sensor devices. But it is not easy to bring out the potential of sensor devices. It requires expertise of sensor devices. So there's a big gap between sensor devices and solutions. To provide great solutions by leveraging our sensor expertise, we do all from edge to cloud to fill the gap. And uh, we consume a lot of open source software to make our products. Uh, open source software constitutes more than 90% of our product. This makes our open source compliance very difficult. Here are some examples of our software product. Uh, the left one, uh, one of our main products are uh, image sensors and firmware uh, built into them, and we distribute device drivers to control the sensors. And we also have development board, and it's a kind of small computer, and it, it works with firmware, device drivers, and OS, middleware, SDKs, package managers, apps, and so on. And of course, we make camera devices. And as described in the previous slide, we have a plat platform as a service business and it involves server software, managed services, and so on. So our various software products make our open source compliance very complicated. For example, dependency analysis, uh, how to identify open source components. Uh, when we make camera devices, we define uh, build dependencies and customize build options and compile source code to generate binaries. We need to read source code and build logs like uh, configure script or make file, cmake list.txt or running uh, LED commands uh, and so on to analyze dependencies. Uh, and on the other hand, when we make web service, uh, we use package managers and refer to package metadata and use pre-built binaries. We should use dependency analysis tools like apt cache depends or pip dep tree or npm list or sift or something like that. So different product needs different techniques. Another example, open source license policies. It depends on how open source comp components will be used. When we make camera device, uh, open source software will be embedded into uh, product distributed in the market 
and software update will be done sometimes. But when we make web service, open source software will be run on server, accessed through web browsers, and software will be updated frequently. So when we define policies, we need to define different policies for the same open source license uh, considering how we use components. Some license cannot be used in camera devices, but it's okay to use in web services. So different products need different policies. Here come some problems. Uh, when, build, uh, when building software, uh, build options are defined. Build options differ depending on products. Changing the build options may change licenses. Mm, what should we do? Then many binaries are generated from one repository. Each binary may have different licenses. Which license should we comply with? Or container image uh, consists of a lot of many, many, many open source components. And sometimes uh, some uh, products use container as build, build environment internally. And some web services use container on server to run programs. Should we do the same for both cases? Uh, maybe some of you don't know how should we do, but uh, some uh, developers doesn't know. So as I explained, uh, we deal with uh, various software products to comply with the open source license. Uh, both product specific knowledge and open source expertise are needed. This was a big challenge. So how we navigated an open source compliance? This is our solution. We assign dedicated developers in charge of open source compliance for their products. Only product developers know the detail of their product. And we created OSPO, consists of open source experts to support developers. There were few experts in our division. We need to train our OSPO members. Uh, but fortunately, there are some open source experts in Sony group. So we learned a lot from them. This is our OSPO I created last year. <coughs> OSPO and product developers work together to comply with open source license. Our OSPO consists of various experts. One manager is him. <laughs> and one leader is me, and eight collaborators, including uh, legal members or I, uh, IP members, and seven dedicated support members in India. We engage with about 30 projects, and we have some types of activities. We define internal rules. We provide uh, engineering support and strategy planning. and. License clearance support team have very important role in our OSPO. Okay, our license clearance support team are in India. They are open source experts. Last year, uh, they built an environment to proceed license clearance. And in every process, they work together with product developers. Uh, today, uh, some members here in this session uh, from here uh, in India. So please talk to them after this session. And here is a real example of license clearance. Sorry, the, it's very complicated, but uh, this was the real uh, uh, log of our process. And uh, this was for OpenCV 4.5. And in this case, uh, 57 binaries are generated from one source package. And product developers and OSPO communicates on GitHub issues. First, product developer create a request and share some detailed information for building binaries. And then OSPO member uh, confirm the inputs, then give some advice about patents. Uh, this one is not the license issues, but we advise them about the patents. Then run some tools for scanning source file like Fossology. After checking scanned results, uh, use shared information from developers to investigate the result 
in detail. In this case, very uh, long log is here. And then identify license for each binary. In this example, it takes a long time to identify because there were 57 binaries. So it takes a lot, a lot of time. Then uh, OSPO uh, review the results here. And after some modification, uh, we prepare uh, complex artifacts like SBOMs or license text or copyrights, source files. Then we re release them to product developers finally. And it takes about one to two weeks per package. The point is, OSPO experts ask product developers for hints to identify license for each binaries. This approach is good for both OSPO and product developers. OSPO experts can acquire wide and practical knowledge of open source. OSPO can also optimize support workflow for products. This feedback and Product developer can concentrate on their development to, uh, to make their product better. And they also can learn what they need to do for license compliance. So this could be uh, another feedback. And finally, I'll show you some of our contribution activities. Uh, partnership with open community is very important for us. Uh, this picture is very famous for OSPO members, I think. And th thank you so much to uh, use this in this slide. And we, uh, for the first step, uh, we strictly comply with open source license because we have respect for all developers in open community. So we do all for uh, open source compliance in OSPO members and developers. And the second step, we uh, our SDKs are released as an open source project and we want to improve them with open community. And finally, uh, to support open community, aligning with our business strategy is also important, but we sponsor community events like such as this year's Open Source Summit Japan, we sponsor this event. And OSPO encourages uh, developers and business division for, for contribution in many ways. So these are the today's key takeaways. The first one, to comply with open source license for various software, dividing the work between OSPO experts and product developers is realistic way for us. Through this activity, OSPO experts can acquire wide and practical knowledges of open source and product developers can make their product better. And finally, OSPO experts also discuss open source strategies and encourage product developers for contribution. So that's all for today's session. Thank you very much. Okay, any questions, comments? Uh, th thank you very much for the uh, great talk and uh, uh, I think that the uh, activity is very nice and uh, so my question is, uh, the, your OSPO structure is very good, I, I think. So how did you find out the, such a structure or such a way? Do, did you have uh, some experience or some know-how before uh, start up the OSPO? Or uh, did you refer to uh, some reference or uh, did you think by them uh, by yourself how, how did you find out the structure okay thank you for the question uh, 
Um, what we done first was uh, to investigate what, gate, what is the issues for us uh, because we have uh, many projects involved and they have unique uh, issues to each other. So we gather all of the issues and analyze them and we define some requirements for OSPO for us. And then we, uh, of course, we refer to some uh, existing example like uh, to the group uh, provided and we uh, decided which one is best for us and the conclusion was this uh, structure for us so the not only uh, internal discussion but also we uh, refer to open discussions uh, is that that was the way we did Ah, thank you very much. I understand. Thank you. Hi, uh, thank you very much for your very, very impressive talk. And uh, may I see some slides after? Okay, uh, yes, uh, sorry, more. No, more. Uh, yes, 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 yes. In such case, so. One thing I'd like to ask you is the, the how to say the right side and the <laughs> downside, the prepare compliance artifact. So that means the license uh, license clearance supporting and the tooling teams will make the how to say the license notices for the product or services and just give the product team. So it means the development team doesn't need to make the, any kind of notices. By, your, by themselves. Am I understanding it's correct? Yes, uh, because we OSPO and product developers work together, so we communicate very de in detail. So mm. OSPO member prepare compliance artifacts for release products, and they just uh, receive the result from OSPO mm. and they release to the, their customer. Oh, so in this case, uh, May I ask this? But if I can, I'm very uh, happy to ask you. So in this case, uh, in your company, the whole kind of artifact, uh, sorry, so kind of the document of notices is managed by OSPO. Uh, I mean, whole kind of product, sorry, the notice of whole kind of product and the services will be managed in the OSPO. Um, responsibility to release the artifact is uh, belong to development team. So uh -huh. fi finally, we give them to manage the compliance artifacts. Uh -huh. But the OSPO member have the responsibility to prepare the compliance artifacts. Thank you so much. And uh, this is my last question. <laughs> May I? <laughs> sure. So, uh, uh, would you please uh, show me again your, the structure of the OSPO? I guess it is in this uh, illustration. So I couldn't find the security <laughs> teams. So do you have any collaboration with the security or security assurance team? Yes, of course. We have another security team, uh, security team <laughs> in out of this figure, but we uh -huh. communicate uh, very, uh, very much every day and how should we handle with the vulnerability of OSS components. So. I think we should add uh, oh, another oh. box here. Oh, thank you, Pemis. <laughs> but the, the security guards doesn't include the OSPO. They're, they're yes. just the security as it is. Uh, both. Uh, uh, both. Bo both uh, because we are in the same section. Security <laughs> team and OSPO team are in the same section. So we do the same for open source security. Again, thank you very much. Hello, uh, thanks for your sharing. I come from Taiwan and I come from the organization OCF that we really want to establish uh, open chain culture in Taiwan. But uh, now uh, we've tried to like to let enterprise 
company knows how important open chain is and help them to build the OSPO, but uh, we really don't know how to make them understand the importance. Usually they will ask us about uh, we uh, might have some risk of uh, the litigation, the suit of the open source license, but if we want to provide them some assistance, they will just ask the like, uh, the license uh, mentor uh, consultants, yeah, but they don't really want to establish the ISO uh, five two three zero and build the OSPO. So I want to ask, how did you build the OSPO from the beginning, and what were the challenges you faced inside your company? Yeah, thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, fortunately, uh, Sony has a long history about open source uh, re relationship, uh, like CE Linux contribution or something like that. And we have both uh, idea about the good uh, side of the open source uh, contribution and uh, risk of open source consuming. And uh, what was good for us uh, was that uh, most of the managers know about the risks of open source consuming. So we uh, started with uh, open source compliance first. So that was the first step for our OSPO. And then uh, we uh, talked with uh, managers about the open source um, activities for the next step. And not only for risk reducing activities, but also how can we um, utilize open source as a strategy, uh, strategically, and they uh, agree with us so we could uh, build this kind of full functional OSPO. Uh, so, yes, uh, I think uh, this was very specific for Sony's case, but uh, you can refer to our uh, uh, example. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. So in terms of um, like, well, there's open source compliance, but in terms of the supply chain, did you receive any uh, pressure or influence from like your customers to provide them with uh, compliance artifacts? Uh, yes, um, it begins to feel like that. <laughs> And uh, our another team uh, started a uh, uh, discussion for how, how should we comply with the laws about this form or supply chain solutions. So uh, we also work with another team about uh, thinking those kind of things. So uh, the answer should be yes. <laughs> So uh, I, I'd like to ask you again, but the very trivial things. But in uh, my experience, the for almost all of Japanese company, uh, mainly they are using the Japanese language for the documentation and the, some kind of uh, trading materials also, and so on. So, <laughs> but in this case, in your case, so you're working with a, a team in India. So I assume the English is the main language for your operation or not? Yes, uh, your left side persons <laughs> are. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, the develop developers and uh, support team uh, communicate in English. Th that's right. So uh, but uh, how about uh, for the Japanese developers in your Japan countryside? They try to speak English. Really? <laughs> Of course, uh, and of course, I, I support them uh, in English and Japanese to communicate fluently with uh, India team, so it works for us. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for your presentation, and um, um, 
My question is similar to um, him. Um, so the, I'd like to know uh, the background behind the uh, involvement of the members or uh, branches. Um, because uh, I imagine uh, at first, um, if I start to uh, make a OSPO, uh, maybe the, uh, initially um, to uh, gather members just uh, Japanese. So the yeah, um, my question is uh, the, uh, what's the background to gathering the overseas members? It's difficult to answer, but uh, I think it was another uh, lucky thing for us that we have a big uh, group company, so we have a lot of uh, subsidiaries, subsidiaries in the world, and uh, we uh, already worked together in another uh, other projects like product development with the India team. So we could easily to start communication about uh, building OSPO uh, for us in India. So um, I think this one is also specific for Sony, but mm, yeah, I, I think it's uh, generally speaking, I think it's very difficult to um, delegate the uh, functionalities to other countries. Yes, I think so. Thank you for the presentation. Um, can you go back to the slide with the OSPO maturity level? I see that on stage four you have the open source summit sponsorship. Do you also encourage internal developers to contribute back to community or you just give money to the uh, different <laughs> events? Uh, yes, uh, we really encourage developers to contribute back to each OSS community and we are thinking about some kind of contribution back to uh, OSS community and we uh, especially uh, have interests in AI domain. So uh, internally we have some kind of uh, discussion about contribution for the OSS community with developers. Thank you. Five minutes we have. <laughs> <laughs> I also have a question about the contribution. How do you decide uh, which uh, project to contribute? Is it bottom up or top down? Uh, that's really difficult question, but um, currently we uh, mainly bottom up approach uh, because uh, the open source technologies are very um, immersive and uh, the top manager doesn't know that those kind of new technologies uh, generally so we uh, bring up some kind of new news of the open source activities and hey, they, they are doing this kind of things and we should do this also so we bottom up the proposal to managers and they also have uh, the idea that uh, open source contribution is very uh, important for business uh, strategy so we can uh, talk uh, for both uh, kind uh, point of view uh, business and open source uh, development so uh, in some project we starting the uh, discussion for contribution uh, regarding the business strategies thank you 
Oh, thank you for the presentation. So I have a question about the, the, the how do you organize the uh, relationship between the uh, developers and the OSPO members? How can you um, gather the engineers in, the, uh, in this activity? Okay, this one, uh, involving developers, developers to... Maybe previous slide. Oh, this <laughs> one. Not this one. Oh, this was sorry. Um, this mm. oh, sorry, but uh, my question is uh, how do you uh, gather the engineers, uh, get the interest from the engineers to do this uh, kind of uh, activity? Um, as uh, we showed earlier, we have a um, certification for open chain and we already had a very strict process internally. Mm -hmm. So every product developer have problem in proceeding the process. So they needed some help. Mm -hmm. And that time we created OSPO and we asked them for any help <laughs> do you need. Then they agree to uh, work with us. Mm -hmm. And also we uh, provide, uh, uh, as you see in the left side of this, uh, we provide them some kind of open source training for them. So we are working together good. Oh, oh, thank you. <laughs> so who, which group is actually running your open source scanning tools like Fossology and Foss ID? Is that the group in India or is that the developers, the product developers? India team. So that means the India team has access to the source code for the different products? Yes. Regarding the source code, uh, gathering all the source code to scan is a kind of big problem. So uh, in in that case, uh, also the India team and product uh, developers works together to gather all the source code to scan. Okay, three minutes left. <laughs> Can we close this session? Okay, thank you very much.